Hi, my name is Henrik and I'm the creator of Figment Caustix. And in this video, I want to show you how you can use these textures to speed up the rendering of Caustix in any of your 3D scenes. So why Caustix textures? Why don't you just set up photon mapping or progressive Caustix and just render it the old fashioned way? In one word, speed. When you're using textures as projection maps, you can render Caustix in seconds instead of minutes or hours. All of the textures are in 2K resolution and they tile and loop seamlessly. If you want to check it out for yourself, there is a free sample that you can download using the link below. And now I'll show you how easy this is to set up using 3ds Max and V-Ray. In this scene, I just have some simple objects, shaders, and two light sources. And this is what it looks like when it's rendered. All right, I'm going to import one of the caustic textures into the scene. So I'll just add a V-Ray bitmap and navigate to my texture folder. For this scene, I'll just be using the lake texture. And I'll select deep. And as you can see, all of these frames are unique. You can just select any one of them and then enable sequence and hit open. And the first thing I want to do is change the color space. You need to set this to none or inverse gamma. This will make the texture look a bit more flat, but preserve more dynamic range in the caustics. Next up, I want to change the playback rate. In this project timeline and in this video you're watching right now, the frame rate is set to 24. All of the caustic textures have been mastered for 48 fps and this makes it possible to have a slow motion or dreamlike effect but if you want playback that looks real time or a bit more natural you would just set the playback rate to 2 or 3. For this example i'll just set the playback rate to 2. As i mentioned in the beginning i already have two v-ray lights in my scene but i won't actually be using a v-ray light to project the caustics and i'll just quickly show you why that is. So I'll just select the light and then drag the texture into the map slot of the light. And I'll enable preview so we can see the directionality of the light. Let's update the render. And my texture isn't really visible. And when I up the directionality of the light, it gets more intense as it's more focused, but it isn't really until I hit one in directionality that I can actually see the texture. And then you might think, uh, fine, let's just leave it at one. But the issue is all of my shadows will always be tech sharp. So if I turn this back down, I can get a softening of the shadows, but the texture will follow along with it. Um, this is not what I want. I want the caustic texture to be projected as sharp while maintaining control over the softness of the shadows. Unfortunately, there's no way to control this separately in V-Ray lights. But of course, there's another option, which is the one we're going to be using. So I'll just delete that. And instead, I'll create a standard target direct light. So I'll just drag that out. And then under shadows, I can select V-Ray shadow. And in the submenu, I can just enable area shadow and then define if the light source is a box or a sphere and then set up the dimensions accordingly. So let's just set these to 20. And under directional parameters, I can define the area where the light and the caustics will be cast. Let's just make this big enough to cover the entire ground. And then I'll just open advanced effects and the material editor, and then drag the caustics texture into the projector map. And because this is a standard light and not a V-Ray light, I want to disable specular. If specular is enabled, it'll just be this infinitely small bright point, which won't look too good. And let's hit render and see how it looks. All right, so we have caustics. Uh, let's just up the multiplier a bit. And as you can see, we have a soft shadow from the light, but the caustic texture is tack sharp. And if we go back to the shadow parameters, we can change the softness of the shadows to anything we like, and it won't affect the sharpness of the caustic texture. This can be really useful if you're making a scene that's supposed to be deep underwater and you want the shadows to be a bit more soft, a bit more dispersed, but you still want to be able to retain the sharpness of the caustic texture. So this looked pretty good, but the caustics are a bit big. We can fix this by changing the tiling values in the material editor. The best tiling value will be dependent on your scene and the size of the light. So this is just something you should play around with. But as you can see, you don't really have to wait for it. You just type in the numbers and then you get almost instant feedback. This is the power of using projection textures because there's almost nothing that needs to be calculated. And as you can see, this is super, super responsive. Of course, when you populate the scene with multiple objects and complicated shaders, that will add to it, but the caustic light projection effect is really, really fast. 
If you're using the V-Ray interactive renderer and you scrub the timeline, you might notice that even though this is an animated texture, nothing really happens, nothing really updates in the renderer. I'm not sure if this is on purpose in V-Ray, but if you open up the material editor and then scrub the timeline, then it updates in the renderer as well. This is just something to keep in mind if you're wondering why the texture won't update. Now let's talk a little bit about direction. Right now the texture is moving from the right towards the left, but that's just how it looks in the material editor. For this scene, I want it to be coming as seen from the camera, from the top left corner and then towards the bottom right corner. And there's actually a pretty easy way that you can control this. If I just go up here and then instead of front, I'll select lights and then select the direct light that I'm projecting the cortex from. So now we're seeing what the light is seeing. And this view also matches the way the texture is being projected. So if the texture is moving from the right towards the left, then when we're looking through this light, the texture will be coming from the right and then towards the left, just like in the material editor. And since I want the direction of the caustics as seen from the camera to be coming from the top left and then towards the bottom right, what I need to do is just rotate the texture in the material editor. Let's just start by 90 degrees. And now it's going from the bottom and then upwards as seen from the light which means seen from the camera, it will be going from the left towards the right. So almost there, let's just put in 135. And now it's going from the lower left corner to the upper right corner as seen from the light, which means it will be going as seen from the camera from the upper left towards the lower right, which is what I wanted. But talk is cheap, so let's check it in the render. And there we go, it works. So let's say that your scene is a lot bigger than just this teapot. Let's try and set it up for that. I'll just drag the camera out a bit and make the plane bigger. Now, all we have to do is make sure that the light that projects the caustic texture is big enough to cover the area that we want. That should do it. But as we make the projection area of the light bigger, we also need to go in and then tweak the tiling. Otherwise, the texture will just be stretched to fill this new area. So let's tweak the tiling a little bit. I made the light beam twice as big, so let's just double the tiling as well. And you can make the projection light as big as you want and then just tweak the tiling accordingly. And that's it. That's how you use Figment Caustic with V-Ray in 3S Max. And remember that there's a free sample of the textures that you can download using the link below. I hope you enjoyed this short introduction and tutorial, and thanks for watching.